I'm Daniel Regan and I'm a photographic artist making work around health and in particular mental health. So I work on lots of personal projects about my own lived experience as somebody with mental health difficulties. And then I work on lots of other projects that are exploring mental health in lots of different ways. Often I'm working on participatory projects, working with community groups, exploring health. And then I also work on lots of collaborative projects, working with people from different disciplines. My name is Sarah, Sarah Yardley. I'm a medical doctor, so I'm a consultant in palliative medicine, work in a, an acute hospital doing that part of my role, but I'm also a researcher, so I work doing clinical academic research about what it is that really makes care good for people, healthcare good for people. I'm working with Dr Sarah Yardley on a collaborative project. The project is a collaboration between the two of us, an interdisciplinary project where I am looking at the data that Sarah is producing for her project and creating images in response to that. Um, and there are lots of themes that are coming out of Sarah's data and information um, around care and what does care look like. Um, and I'm interpreting that data through photography. I've always been really interested in the people aspect of healthcare and of medicine, treating people's symptoms, but also really treating them as a person and working in collaboration with them to work out what's best for that particular individual. And I've always been interested in how people make sense of things and learning in the widest sense. Sarah's work is looking at working with two different types of people. So one is people living with severe mental health difficulties and one is people at end of life. The two groups really resonated with me, firstly because of my own lived experiences around mental health. Um, so I'm really interested in hearing about um, the ways in which we care for people living with complex mental health needs. And then the second group um, I was really interested in because in recent years a lot of my work has been around grief um, after I experienced uh, my own um, sudden loss of my, my mother in uh, 2019. I think Sarah was really keen to look at alternative ways of sharing the findings from her research. So not just having an academic paper, um, but looking at how we can use imagery to convey some of the themes in the work. So the point of my project was really to understand what, in a more kind of open way, rather than a really kind of medical, clinical, sciencey kind of way, what safety meant in those contexts, what relationships looked like, what, what made good and what didn't make good, and what we could learn from people's experiences to, to understand how to improve things better at a systems level. And what I want to see, the kind of overall aim of the project is, does it bring things that are normally hidden out into the open, which is the first step to making a difference? And um, do using these methods that are very socially based about um, people's relationships, experience, talking about things together, does that help us take a a, a better view on what SAFE looks like. I'm producing a series of six images to go alongside uh, Sarah's research paper. The ideas have come out of conversations really around water and Sarah had initial ideas around um, archipelagos and moving through um, water and moving through islands and that sometimes things are easy, sometimes waters are choppy, sometimes the journey is complex and I took that idea around kind of fluidity and started to think about um, how I could manipulate water um, in the work. So water and fluidity is really the sort of core theme of what I'm producing. In terms of the more creative aspect of the project, that very much came about for me as I started doing the research and seeing what sort of data came about and talking to different people and thinking about finding different ways to represent the research and what was being found and not just relying on kind of traditional written ways and, and that's where I first made the connection with, with Daniel and talked about is there something visual we can do. I'm just filling up the tray with some water. The more water you have, the bigger the speaker you need to be able to manipulate using sound, which is why, why I'm using a, a small tray instead of some kind of huge vat of water, because I would need a super strong speaker to be able to do that. So by altering the frequencies that are coming out of the speaker, you can manipulate 
the water to create different patterns. So normally I'd be shooting this in the dark. I'm just showing you the setup for now. I'm also working with some um, UV lights. So the next thing that I do is to secure these um, to the side of the, the tray of water. And I've found that actually the UV lights work really well because once I start mixing in water with oils and inks, you get a really, really amazing change in the color. So I'm often trying to do kind of everything myself, which is why I'm sort of working with manipulating the water, um, playing the sound and also trying to shoot the images. So I'm often kind of juggling a lot of different things. So I need to shoot this in the dark. So now that I'm all set up, the next part of the process is um, switching off the lights and um, beginning to experiment with the inks and the oil and the water. It's a real kind of experimental process. So I'm sort of manipulating the, the frequencies to create different ripples with the sound. I'm adding in um, inks and oils. Um, and then when the oil uh, mixes with the water, you tend to get these like really big blobs. And then I'm using the um, the vibrations from the frequency to break those up into kind of smaller um, smaller little sort of bubbles and this uh, it's a really nice effect because when you're looking through the camera you can kind of see um, things sort of morphing and changing so things being broken up um, and then rejoining once you switch off um, the sound vibrations The first thing that I've been doing is using a rather large speaker in my studio to play specific sound frequencies to manipulate water. And I've been working at a very small and macro level, looking at combining water with oil, with inks, food colouring, to look at how I can photograph the kind of surfaces of water, but use sound to disturb and disrupt um, the kind of blending of oils and waters. And I guess I'm really interested in working on a really, really tiny sort of macro level. Um, also because lots of the images, you don't have a, a sense of scale. Sometimes they look kind of molecular and biological um, and other images are looking like kind of galaxies and universes. So there's something very small and intimate about them and also really large and expansive. Sometimes a brief can be quite constricting. It's quite rigid and you know that you have to produce a certain type of work. And I guess what's been really fascinating about working with Sarah and working with somebody from a complete different discipline is that there's real scope for experimentation. Um, and I think that's something that has been missing in some of my work recently. So it was really exciting for me to be able to come up with my own ideas, um, have a bit of a play and experiment in the studio. For Sarah's research, she has been working with a focus group of people that come from all sorts of different backgrounds. So that might be people with lived experience from the two groups that she's working with. It might be family members or carers, but also um, people working within medicine from all different backgrounds who have been able to give their insights into what best practice around care looks like. So we did a research session to, together, Daniel and I, and. And he, you know, I was then much more, I'm now still facilitating it, I guess, on one level, but I was much more in the background. And this bit of the research, they were workshops, although they were all online. But yes, Daniel joined us and, and he led part of that session. It was a session with people with patient, carer and professional experience. And often, as is the case in real life, you know, the professionals might also have carer experience, the carers might also have patient experience, etc. So none of us in one single box. And I'm hopeful, I mean, this is still a work in progress. So um, Daniel's been working on some images and our plan is that we will share those via social media. But to really open up the conversation, bring different people into the conversation, see how people react to it, and hopefully highlight the research beyond the sort of academic world. The conversation that we want to join is a much bigger societal conversation. The subject of Sarah's research I think is really important. It's considering care and in particular best practice within care for those two groups that Sarah is working with. So I think that the findings are not only important and interesting for medics and doctors and people that are delivering care, but actually the ways in which we want to be cared for. And that's why it's been really important for Sarah to involve people with lived experience, whether that's their personal experiences um, or those supporting 
um, people living with those difficulties through family or being carers. And I think the evidence that comes out needs to reach more diverse audiences. So if we can do that by using photography um, to engage audiences that wouldn't normally be um, engaging with research, then projects like this, I think, have enormous scope to expand um, the types of people that um, will see this research and the findings. Once I've finished shooting all the work, I'll um, edit them down into those six final images for the project and sit with Sarah to go through the images and discuss my rationale, um, look at how they match up with the data. Um, and then there'll be a, a sort of public release of the images where they'll be shown alongside extracts from Sarah's research project. Beyond sharing the themes and saying I wanted something visual to represent the research and to take the conversation and what was coming out of it to a broader audience, we weren't much more specific than that. I have shared with Daniel anonymised extracts of data so he has got more of a feel of the, you know, the fuller story. But then we decided that he would come and talk to, to the group that I was running the workshops with and that was already kind of crossing the divide between um, people who have, you've asked to be a research participant. So when I go out and, you know, observe a clinical setting or interview a patient, um, you know, they're very much, I mean, I hope I do it in a collaborative way, but it's inviting them to take part in my research. By the time we got to the workshops, it was more of a discussing together. So those boundaries between who's the researcher, who's the participant, it's more on a kind of peer-like level. We had a starting point and an ending point in terms of a brief, but um, we, we've kind of let it play out with that group in between. Photography is important to me, not just personally, but professionally. It's obviously how I earn a living, but there's something much deeper about photography for me. It's a way for me to kind of document the experiences that I have. It helps me understand how I move through the world. And I think it gives me um, insights into different experiences. So for example, working on this project um, is a really fascinating opportunity for me to work with people that I might not have access to without photography. And I get to respond um, to their experiences and the research in a way that feels, um, I guess, you know, it's a part of me. That's how I, how I deal with things. I create images in response to experiences. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Sarah Yardley and UCL for the funding for the project and a huge personal thank you to the artist Frank Reed and also James Cooper for their support on developing the ideas around working with sound. So I'm very happy if people are interested in the research for them to contact me. Um, so um, I suspect that you can Google me. <laughs> I try not to giggle myself too often, but yeah, people can certainly contact me via my email at um, University College London um, and I'm based in the Marie Curie Palliative Care Research Department there, um, so they can contact me through that. Um, both Daniel and I are on Twitter um, and can be contacted that way. Um, Daniel also has his own website and, and those are probably the easiest ways to, to make contact and then depending what it is people would like to know more about, um, we can take things from there. Mm -hmm.